to determine the age of meteorites, components, um, planetary differentiation or relative ages between components and meteorites, we need appropriate decay systems. Now, appropriate means we need decay systems with a certain um, half-life. And this half-life can be chosen, or well, this half-life can be uh, sought for in such a small program, which is quite convenient for, for these things. Now, for example, if you want to determine the relative ages between, um, say, CAIs and corn rules, we would like to have a system with half-life of a couple of hundred thousands of years. So to find such systems in this little program here, I can input a minimum half-life, which is t0.5, and a maximum half-life t0.5. First, I need to choose a unit, for example here, thousands of years, for the minimum and also for the maximum thousands of years. And then I set the maximum to a couple hundred thousands of years and I get a long list here. And of course, a thousand years is not very sensible, because after roughly 10 half-lives, a system um, is, is, well, thought of being ex extinct. And uh, so if I have a system with a half-life of 100,000 years, it will be extinct after 1 million years. So um, we can safely set the minimum to something like maybe 200, around 200,000 years. And then I set a maximum to 1 million years. And this is the list um, we then get. And of course, within this list, there are a couple of isotope systems that are not very sensible for um, analysis, as these are very difficult to measure, like curium-248 or plutonium-242 or something like tin or selenium is very difficult to measure because their concentrations is very low. Now, one system that is very often used is the aluminum-26 system. This also has a very nice half-life of a little more than 700,000 years, which means that... Um, after three or four half-lives, when there's still a lot of DK26 aluminum to magnesium 26, there's still a lot of magnesium excess magnesium 26 that can be measured. So this is a very good um, system here. But of course, the others could be used as well, something like maybe krypton 81 or chlor chlorine or something like this. Now, if you want to measure or determine the relative ages of meteorites and also corn roots and so on, there might be a system more appropriate between something like one and five millions of years. So I set this to one million years and this one here to five million years. And then this is the new list we get here. And here are also very um, often used and familiar um, systems like iron 60 decays to a nickel 60 within about 1.5 million years or the 53 manganese to 53 chromium system within 3.8 million years here, which is often used. And again, of course, these um, rare earth elements down here like adolinium, dysprosium, and so these are not really, really sensible systems as these are very difficult to measure. The same is true for technetium, but beryllium 10 or zirconium 93 are considered as systems that might be, might be sensible. Now, for core formation, which happens maybe around 10 million years after a T0, so solar system formation, which is defined by the CIA age, um, we'd like to have systems of around maybe 10 millions of years, let's say 10 to 20 millions of years. And then this is the list we get. And of course, there's the very popular Hafnium 82 decaying to tungsten 182 system here, but also systems like palladium are used or iodine-129 can be used. Curium might not be the most sensible, but it, it is still possible to do here. And then for something like mantle differentiation in terrestrial plants or something like this, we might, or in the moon or so, we might have a system um, of around 100 million years, something like this, so put this to 20 million to, say, 300 millions of years. And this is the new list. And again here, the one... 46 samarium decaying to 142. Nidumium is very popular to, um, to use here. Others, again, might be very difficult, like plutonium, to measure. But it is possible, and here we at least very quickly um, get information about possible, sensible, and appropriate decay systems. And finally, for very 
for absolute dating, we need very long lived systems, say 500 to a million years to maybe whatever, billion years or something like this. And again, here there are the very popular systems like rubidium 87 decaying to strontium 87, um, lutetium 176 is very popular, loosened also. Of course, the uranium lead systems down here, which are very often used for absolute ages of sea, ice, earth, rocks in general. So with such a little program, we can very quickly find appropriate decay systems for determining ages, absolute ages and relative ages of meteorites, their components and all other planetary materials.